Well guys, welcome to your Ford Rails tutorial. And in this tutorial, like like I promised, I'm going to be explaining the fundamentals of the structure of the of the framework. So all the folders and all that kind of stuff. So let's start with the application. The application folder is where you're gonna be spending most of your time in. This includes the model view controller folders. Now Rails has a pretty good idea of where where um it wants you to put all this stuff in. And as a matter of fact, starting from three point three point I think. Um, they decided to also include more folders, so you're gonna see a bunch of empty folders because they want you to, you know, to put specific files in certain areas. So if we have in the in the app folder, this is where you're gonna put all the controllers, all the models, and all the views. So c controllers is basically like I said, it's all the all the brain stuff. The models is has to do with the database, and the views has to do with all the all the thing that you're gonna be able to see, like the JavaScript, CSS, and um, the HTML. So, the assets is where you're gonna keep all your individual images, your JavaScripts, and style sheets. So the ones that are for your project, and um, the helpers are basically just there's gonna be classes, there's gonna be files that they're gonna help you write, you know, with your with your views and and models and controllers. We also have a mailers folder, and it's empty by default. And basically, if you want to have an application and um, you want to send emails, you know, you want to have templates of emails in there, then you should be able to put them in here. Okay, so that's that's that for this one here. Let's go to the next folder. It's configs, and this is obviously all the configuration of all the all the frameworks. So in the environment, you know, we have the basic ones like I said, the development, which is the one that we're going to be using. The production is for production where you're gonna put your entire um your website online already and test has to do with the test environment which you should be able to test your, your individual code without affecting the, the development or production environment. Next we have the initializers and these are basically just um um things that the frameworks like you know like secret token has to do with you know like to protect against cross site request forgery and stuff like that. So, you know, this is pretty advanced stuff, so we're not going to get into it right now. Locales, this is for, um, it has to do with, if you want to have um, a website that supports multiple languages, so, you know, all, a lot of frameworks that I've seen support different languages, so this is the ones that support EEN, is for English, and you could have more files like S for Spanish or something like that. So this is to support more um, more languages. Next we have the application, the, the file that has to, to do with the entire application here. The boot, I, I think this is for the bootstrap, I'm not, I'm not sure. And database, this is um, specific things to the database itself, so you know, the environment itself again here, the development. You could put in the password here, but if you put a password, remember to, to change the password over there in the database. Uh, and in MySQL, whether it be Navicat or MySQL, my, PHP, MyAdmin, my bad. And you know they're they're together here. And environment. Well, you know, I really don't know what this is actually. You don't you don't have to bother with. It. Routes. This one is actually an important one, and this has to do with the rules that the the, the URL is going to is going to use. So the framework, like I said, the one that we were using is this one here. So when we type something to the URL, it's going to expect the controller, then the action, and then the ID. But we're also able to to put in some um, some rules on top of that, and depending on what you know where they are, so it reads from top to the bottom. So if it finds a rule here that you 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 um you put specifically, it's going to take this one instead of this one. This is like the default. And in the next one, I'm gonna go actually over routes, so you have a better idea what I'm talking about. So that's the the config folder. Next we have the DB for database obviously. And you know you could read over here, it's not important right now. I'll go over it later. And we have the docs where you're able to put some documentation regarding your, your application. Or so certain you know tasks or whatever you want to put in there that relate to your specific application. Lib, this is a folder for um for you know for library, like assets from different places, like let's say um you wrote an application and you wrote some JavaScript that belongs, 
you know that that could be used in different applications, but you're using it in your application. I know it doesn't make sense right now, but you know this is where you're able to put some some of the assets that you wrote yourself, but don't necessarily you know has to work specifically for your own application. It could work for others, but in here, these assets here are are specifically for your application. But this one's you know they could work for any application. The logs, you know, this is where all the the logs get put in, you know, errors. Sometimes you connect to to the wrong to the wrong port or to the wrong um I mean to the wrong controller. It'll it'll create an error here. It'll log an error, I mean. Then the public, this actually um I'm gonna cover it in the next tutorial, so don't worry about it. Script, this is where the little programs you you could write in there. Um there's one here, Rails obviously is the one that we've been using. And there's other ones you could download from um GitHub as well. Test, this is um where you'll be able to test your, your entire um, your entire application. And this you know it's got some pretty advanced stuff here too, so we're gonna skip over that. Temp is the temporary files. This has to do with the files that um that Rails uses to you know to read and write in it. So you know you don't have to worry about this file, this folder. Bender, this is another place where you're able to put the you know the JavaScript and all that stuff in there. And this is Bender actually is um because before 3.0 Rails 3.0 we used to have pretty good organization as far as Rails was concerned as far as um Ruby files, but I think the guy that created DH I mean the guy that um yeah created Rails that he they call him DHH. And uh, he said that, you know, we're going to do better than this and we're going to also separate our JavaScripts and all that stuff. That's why he created three folders for it. The assets for, for all of our stuff. The public, not the lib, that's another one. And the final one is Bender. This is where you put the Bender individual files like JavaScripts and all that stuff. So if you found a file that you want to download, like, um, uh, you know, like one of those... Um, what are they called? Sliders you would put in here, or certain plugins that you would find you would put them in there. That way, when you update them, you know exactly where they are. The config, um, you know, this you don't have to worry about it either. It's for rack-based servers, so if you want to host it with them. To, you know, I I really don't think you're gonna use it. The gem file is important actually, and this is where you're gonna put all the dependency gems that you're gonna be using. So as you can see here. This is all the gems that this application is using. And the good thing about this file is that let's say you wanted to download a f another project from somebody else from GitHub or from or you know just transfer it. Um you would have this file here and he would have all the all the gems that he's using for this particular project. So the nice thing about this is that um the the framework comes with this this um this tool called bundler. So most likely you're not going to have all the gems that he included because there's a bunch of them so what what this file is going to allow us to do is if we download another project and we have it here so let's say this is another project i would just write um rails bundle and what would that do is i will get all those gems and install them in my computer that way you know, I have exactly the same versions of the gems that he used, so it'll be it'll work exactly for me. So when I have to worry about getting each individual gem to see if it works, I'll just get the entire copy of his. So that's you know, there was a problem back then, but this, this is a really nice solution. As you can see, also one thing that I forgot to mention is that they're going to the guys that develop Rails, they have a new way of thinking now. Before it was like uh, putting it as most basic as possible, and then adding you know certain gems that um, that people wanted to add. You know, but now what they're doing is they're going to say, okay, we're gonna pick the gems that most people are gonna use, the ones that they often are gonna use, and we're gonna pick the winners, right? So he's the guy that created Rails. He's saying, okay, we want people to use CoffeeScript because it's gonna be a lot neater for JavaScript. <laughs> And so he put it by default in here. And also SAS, if you don't know what that is, that's a preprocessor for CSS. Basically, it extends the language by adding um, variables and, and um, inheritance. 
So, you know, we, we should be able to see more of these gems getting added by new versions. So they're picking you, you know, they're picking some winners and they're adding them by default in here. And rake is just another tool like the script here, but, you know, we'll use it later for database migrations and stuff like that. And don't worry about this gem log file. And the readme is finally just, um, you know, when you go to GitHub or something like that, you want to put exactly what this application does. You, this is where you put it. So if I were to put here, like, my application is called blog, I would put something like, um, you know, this application is for a blog or something like that. And usually people change this readme.rdoc. doc. They change it to readme.markdown. So if you ever go to GitHub and you see like a little star here, they that's what they did. They changed it to to the extension um, markdown because it looks nicer, and you're able to you're able to um, see it in GitHub a lot better. So that's pretty much it for the you know the whole explanation for this kind of stuff. In the next tutorial, I'll be covering the routes and maybe the the redirects. Okay, thank you.